leaves no stone unturned Perfect with no flaws at all How the laws of a love A way of life, a way of life A way of life, a way of life Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All praise belongs to Allah and may his peace and blessings be upon his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I welcome you dear viewers to this episode where we are discussing funerals and death. Joining us discussing this topic we have our dear shiuch. First of all Sheikh Asim al-Hakim from Saudi Arabia, Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif from Canada and Sheikh Salim al-Amri from the UAE. May Allah reward you all for joining us. Now we've began discussing death the inevitability of it, the reality that it's something none of us can hide from and also that we have responsibilities before death. We have the responsibility of being upon Iman, dying as Muslims. We also have paying off debts. We have many many things that we have to do to be prepared for this death. Now before we jump in a lot to the topic, one of the things which unfortunately a lot of Muslims might tend to forget a little bit about is a will. Sometimes we might want to avoid a will because it's related to death. We think, I've still got time. You know, I'm young, I don't need to prepare a will. But we have sudden death. Sudden death is something that can strike at any moment. Which means, really, any person who is of age, you know, they're past puberty, they're going to be held into account, they have some wealth, you know, that they will be able to distribute after they die. Does a will become compulsory for them in this case? And I'll ask you, Sheikh Asim, about the will. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa ala Rasulillah. A will is something that is highly recommended in Islam. Ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, said that the Prophet wasallam said, it is not lawful for a man to spend three days without having his will next to him. But what is meant by the will? The will is something that you may want to give away that does not exceed one third of what you leave. Because in Islam, it's unlike any other religion. The distribution of the inheritance was done by Allah Azza wa not by any scholar or by me or you. As a person, I have no right in saying, my son, I'd like to deprive him from my will. I'm going to give everything to the cat, as they do, or to the dog. This is not a part of Islam. Islam tells you this goes to the wife, this goes to the son, this goes to the father, this goes to the mother, this goes to the daughter. And a will is something that usually declares the finances of an individual. So if I gave Sheikh Salim an amount of money as a, a loan and no one knows about it, if I die, this money would go. So I have to say, listen, I gave Sheikh Salim so and so, Brother Musa gave me so and so, and nobody knows about it because Musa would come and say, I gave him a hundred thousand, but I don't have any proof. People who are inheriting, they will say, Well, sorry, if you don't have any proof, anyone could claim likewise. So it is recommended that you have this to free yourself from accountability and to give all those who have rights their own rights, whether it is a sudden death or a death that was prepared for. And by the way, with the issue of sudden death, it is a sign of bad ending. It is a sign of bad ending only to those who are sinners. The Prophet says, والسلام, sudden death is the taking of someone who's angry. And that is Allah Azza wa So if a person is sinful and he dies while surfing the pornography websites or watching a movie or putting the headsets and listening to music and it comes he's deprived from saying la ilaha illallah which if he did would entitle him to go to jannah he's deprived from returning rights to their lawful owners while the person on his dying bed who's been sick for a couple of weeks or a couple of months or a couple of years he has all the time to say give the money back to this person forgive me my brother I said something bad about you so when death comes to him alhamdulillah he's clear I wanted to add something about the like the sudden death there's a brother he had cancer he had a big operation that he needed to do and some people gathered together to do like a mini fundraiser for this brother and they asked me to speak 
And then I said, and I thought about the situation, I said, there's no doubt this brother's being tested. Right? I said, but we're all being tested. And it's not him that's going to die only, we're all going to die. However, we've all gathered to focus on his death, yet some of us may die even before he dies. SubhanAllah. Right? So this thing about sudden death, what's scary about it is, the person is not prepared for it. When somebody, and this is a blessing SubhanAllah, when somebody is diagnosed with cancer and everybody feels sad, if you step back and you look at the big picture, it's almost like they've been given the chance to repent to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala before they die. They've been given some time. And no doubt it's a very painful situation to go through, but there's a blessing in it as well. That the person is given that chance to repent to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and slow. And you know, Sheikh Salim said that their deeds are increased and Allah forgives their sins before they die. SubhanAllah, now that you mention this, there's a very, very good friend of mine. And he actually went through cancer twice. The first time he went through cancer, he was very young. He wasn't so practicing, but this was a wake-up call to him. He became practicing, alhamdulillah, one of the best people you could ever meet, subhanAllah. May Allah bless him and protect him. Amen. And then again, a second time, he was afflicted with cancer. And it got to the point where doctors were telling him to come in every day, test after test, everything's going downhill. And naturally, people are going to visit him. And it almost got to the point where we were going as if to give him the farewell, because this is what the tests seemed to be saying. And this brother, may Allah reward him, I mean, you can't understand, I'll, I don't understand, but he said, you know, going through this drove him crazy. Your Iman is played with, you know, it's a very big test. But even then, people would go to visit him as if to farewell him, and he would say to them, do not think for a moment you're going to pray my janazah. I am going to be praying your janazah. Allah Akbar. <laughs> and this brother, subhanAllah, day after day, as I said, things were getting worse. Until one day, the doctors, they called him in, and they, they told him by this time, you have two weeks to go. They called him in, and they said, you yeah, know, we'll do our test. They did the test, and they said, please, we need to do another. They said, please, one more. So he thought, subhanAllah, this must be it. Until the end of the day came, very, very long day, test after test after test. And they said, we don't know what exactly has happened, but it's all gone. You're free. The cancer is completely gone. Mashallah. And he's alive until now, and brothers have died. And he's prayed their janazah. Who would have ever thought that this could have happened? So you see, not only did it was a second reminder for him, and a purification, but it was a reminder for us, subhanAllah, that you can never be sure. Nobody could ever be sure when it's going to come. Now that I mention this, I have to mention, I have to mention this, a dear sheikh of ours who passed away, may Allah have mercy upon him, and he had lung cancer. He'd never smoked a cigarette in his life, but he had lung cancer. And we went to visit him as well, to, you know, console him. As, and we know it's a sunnah to go visit the sick. And he was very, very close to death until, subhanAllah, he had all of his family there amongst, you know, with him that day, until he said to one of his sons, he said, please help me to make sajda. And he couldn't make sajda because of his condition. So all he could do was raise his finger and say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And at that moment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took his soul. And I remember going to the funeral and wondering, what do I say to my friends to console him, to, you know, say some kind words, but he was smiling, subhanAllah. He was smiling and he said, Allah took my father's soul while he was saying, La ilaha illallah. He was so happy that his father was able to go in this state, subhanAllah. May Allah have mercy upon him. Ending, mashallah. But now that we've said this, I asked Sheikh Salim. It just reminded me, our Sheikh Mustafa Makki, al Azhari, was teaching us fiqh. All the classes that he was giving on death, from the Janais till the end. Then he fell sick. We visited him and he became very thin. I remember that one of our brothers asked him, How do you feel, Sheikh? What is this? Your situation is you are weak. He said, This is a blessing from Allah. This is the bounty from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He bestows it upon whom he See, this is how he sees what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sickness and this, and this contentment, rida, to have this rida with your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. That only Allah, because out of love, He is doing this to you. Out of love. Not me is torturing you, 
Imam Ibn Jawzi, rahimahullah, he mentioned maybe after the break. Okay, inshallah, we'll go to a very short break and uh, we'll continue with this very good topic. May Allah reward you all. Our dear viewers, do stay tuned. Inshallah, we'll be back after a very short moment. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, dear viewers. We're here with our dear Shaykh discussing the topic of funerals and death. Now, just before the break, Sheikh Salim, you were mentioning the saying of Sheikh Ibn Jawzi, rahimahullah. Yes, Ibn Jawzi mentioned in his books, he said, there were many people we used to see them in the first row in the masjid, find them in the first row in the masjid, and one would envy them, mashallah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested them. He said, one of them, he felt sick, and we heard him saying, why are you punishing me? Talking to Allah. Why are you torturing me? This is when you worship Allah upon ignorance. You have no ilm. See, our sheikhs, used, they say this is bounty, blessing. This is a punishment. This is the ignorance when you worship Allah without knowledge. He said another one, he had one child, and Allah took that child. And he said, my neighbor has many children, and you took mine? The only one? SubhanAllah. So this rida about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this contentment that we are inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. What does it mean? We are Allah's. Allah's. He owns us and unto him will be the return. We are his. He takes us anytime. See the true mu'mina, Musulayn. When she lost her son, she told her husband, what do you think, my dear husband? Because, first of all, after he came from the prayer, she didn't tell him that his son passed away. She gave him the food. And after the food, she prepared herself for him. And after that, she told him, what do you think if our neighbors lent us a utensil? Then they asked to have that utensil back. I said, we have to give it back. I said, the one who gave us the, our child took it. Allah gave it to us and he took it. When he informed the Prophet ﷺ in the morning, the Prophet ﷺ said, did you sleep with each other? He said, yes. He prayed for them. And she conceived from that very night. Allah took one and gave them another one. So this is the rida. So when you fall sick during, before you die, just any sickness. The Sahaba, they used to rejoice when one gets the fever. Because they know this is a way of cleansing and washing away the sins. There was a certain at a point to that in the topic of a child dying. And the question that comes to you know, a parent's mind, a mother's mind is, why did Allah take my child? And if you look through the Quran and Sunnah, there's no answer to that question. The verses and the ayat, it'll talk about the reward of the person who's patient, right? It doesn't open a discussion with the human being. And really, I thought to myself, what kind of answer would be like the mother would agree with that, that kind of answer? Nobody will agree. But just like Sheikh Salam said, it's about ridha, it's about acceptance. So if it's not a discussion between the servant of Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's that if this happened, then the person accepts what the situation is and turns it for the better, makes it a mercy for them. I would like here to add something that a glad tidings, actually, for when you lose a child when Allah takes the life of a child who hasn't reached the age of puberty, these children are called afrat, the afrat, and they are intercessors. They are in the Jannah, waiting for you. Among the intercessors on the day of resurrection are those children. The malaika, the angels, they tell them, go inside, go inside. They are at the gate of the Jannah. They say, no, we will not go inside until you bring our parents. Subhanallah. The father or the mother is in the hellfire. So Allah tells them, bring the mother or bring the father. So this child is there waiting for you. That's why we Muslims, Alhamdulillah, ala na'matil Islam, wallahi. This is the blessing of Islam, brothers and sisters. The way life to us, we move from one phase to another phase, that's it. We are not afraid because we are in this life, then we move to another form of life, which is we call it barzakh life, transitional life. Then from that phase we go to the other phase where we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And I always tell my brothers and sisters, you see, the way we have to look to it, that we are sitting in the lounge in the airport waiting for our flights in queue. So we are chatting. Then, okay, Sheikh Mohammed, this is my flight. Okay, you say we'll catch you on the next one. That's it. It's a flight. One before the other. One will arrive before the other. And the real home is the Jannah. That is our real home. We should always think about it and work for it. The moment in the authentic hadith, the soul arrives there, the moment the soul arrives to th in the Jannah and is taken and put in the shroud, all those believers who preceded you, your friends are waiting. The moment you arrive, you say, ha ha, tell me, tell me. And they ask you about the news of the people behind. And they ask you about someone they know. And he died before you, but he didn't make it to the Jannah. You tell them, didn't he come? Say, oh, dahaba ila ummihi. He didn't make it. Didn't make it. That's why a Muslim, he knows this is why the non-Muslims are afraid of death. And they don't want you to mention it. Because they are in the dark. They don't know what awaits them. They don't know this. But the Muslim, everything is clear, alhamdulillah. He knows from this to this to that. Yeah, subhanAllah. We know, and as this is just reminding me, the reality is that our father, Adam alayhi salam, he was from Jannah, yes. from paradise. So therefore, we can almost consider ourselves, we're all immigrants away from our homeland waiting to return. And we know the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, be in this world like a traveler, passing on his way, stopping for a moment and then passing on. So this, in essence, is a reminder, don't get too attached to this world. Because it's only a short time until we go to eternity, until we return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these going in with the theme of what we were discussing, about having our whole life as a preparation for this. Sometimes we might get caught up in the dunya, sometimes we might think, or we might fool ourselves and not think of death, so we think that this world is going to be our eternity, that there's nothing else. But when we have that right perspective, may Allah reward you for reminding us, we're going to truly see that it's just part of our journey. What Sheikh Salim said about his Sheikh Mustafa Mahdi, may Allah have mercy on his soul, reminds us of the balance in a Muslim's life. So we have the fear of Allah and we have the hope as well. And the Prophet said this والسلام, beautifully and eloquently, do not die except thinking good about your Lord. But the Prophet is telling us, at the time of dying, you should not be in despair. However, scholars say at the time of living, you should be afraid. Because if I am wishful and hopeful on the negative part, rather than being fearful of Allah Azza wa Jal, I'd be encouraged to do sin. I have the money, I have the health and wealth, I have everything that facilitates this for me. If I don't have the fear at the back of my mind, I would find it difficult to resist the temptation while I'm alive. When I'm dying, while I'm in my dying bed, it should be the opposite. I should not be fearful that Allah give me a bad ending. On the contrary, I should think positive of Allah Azza wa Jal because this is the time where I'm hopeful and wishful for Allah's mercy. The Prophet والسلام, visited one of those Ansar who was on his dying bed. And he asked him, how do you feel? The man is dying. So the young man said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, I am afraid of my sins, but I'm wishful in Allah's mercy. Look at the balance, which a lot of the Muslims don't have when they're alive or when they're in dying bed. The Prophet gave him the glad tidings, alayhi salatu wasalam, by saying, by Allah, these two, fearing your sins and wishing for Allah's mercy, do not come or join at this station or this position you're in, except Allah Azza wa Jal would give you what you wish and will protect you from what you fear. In Medina, I was once praying, it was in the last days of Ramadan, and Shaykh Hudayfi, he was, he was making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he said this dua, and even in Salah, I was thinking, what an amazing dua. And the dua is saying, what it means is that, oh Allah, if our good deeds are not good enough to reach you, then your mercy is good enough to reach us. 
because it's a two-way direction. So the person has their sins, but they know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy can reach them. Yeah. Now, when we're looking at death, as we mentioned, some of us might be that we have time to repent, we have time to prepare. I'd like to take a look just a little bit at the best of examples about our Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. He fell into a sickness and he did have some time what are some of the, you know, the tips? Because we all want a good end. We want to be prepared as best as we can. From the death of our beloved Prophet, peace be upon him, what are some of the lessons that we take? Because we know his death, you know, went through stages until it got worse. And each time he reacted in certain ways. So I might go to you, Sheikh Hasim, because I love to hear from you. Some lessons from how the Prophet, peace be upon him, faced this trial of death. The Prophet, alayhi fell sick for about two weeks. And some scholars say that the Prophet himself said that I'm finding the pains coming back to me from the poisoned sheep I took a bite off. So it used to come back to the Prophet as I mean, used to fall sick for a number of days each year. At the time of his death, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he felt sick for about a couple of weeks. And it was difficult for him. And while he was on his dying bed, he had a pot with water and he used to dip his hand into it and wash his face and says, Inna lil mawti sakarat, that verily death has its, not intoxications, but it has the drowsiness of death, the, the feeling of death coming, associating with it. Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, visioned and viewed, that is, the pain that the Prophet Islam was going through and she said after seeing this happening to the Prophet of Allah Azza wa Jal, by Allah this is a good sign and therefore I would not wish that any of my loved ones would not go through this see we have a issue is that when we think that a sudden death is a good death oh it's painless and such illness and sickness and pains is a bad sign it's the opposite as Sheikh Salim said, this erases and eradicates all remaining sin. So when you actually die, you have no sins to be held accountable for. It's all gone. It's all forgiven. So this is any yani, one of the things that... Subhanallah. We have come to the end of the episode. Inshallah, we can continue on this point in our coming episode. May Allah reward you all for joining us and contributing. Inshallah, we hope to see you in our future episodes. And also to our dear viewers, may Allah reward you for joining us. Inshallah, we hope to see you in our coming episodes. Until then, I greet you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A way of life, a way of...